Welcome back to Overlord Anime Review, episode number 11. This is discussing the 43rd episode of the series, which is also the title of the book, a uh, book th 10, Ruler of Conspiracy. Yep, this one adapts from the second half of chapter 3, and effectively almost finishing up adapting book, uh, the book, three, book 10, almost done with it. It adapts, it almost pretty much finishes it up, all this stuff is the epilogue. Which they probably would have next week. Yes, unlike last episode, I actually did to record this the very day it came out. Good job on my part. So, before we pick up, now here's the thing. The anime does progress the way the, the actual book does. Because here's kind of the thing. When they do this. Where in the book, basically what proceeds is chronologically out of order. Now... I get kind of the reason why, because they want, Madhouse wants to stay as faithful as they can to the source material, and from what I can tell, they do a pretty good job with it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, sir, indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes. So. Pretty much in a way, when it comes to this episode... We pretty much pick up. We kind of pick up where the where the beginning portion of the previous episode left off. We have I just wandered about and pondering what to do next, and then all of a sudden he decides to go to the Brazilian Empire, which we saw in the last episode. Basically, this first portion of this episode does explain basically how he got there. Yep, where he basically they just well ride a carriage there, and pretty much in the way. Thing's still typing. Yeah, so he actually goes to a very expensive mansion, meets up with a a merchant who's promoting he because he wants to basically just Yeah. Okay. So, I keep getting distracted by someone on Discord. Sorry about that. So, they meet up with the promoter, uh, suggesting that the promoter is ideal, basically, to recruit adventurers fresh from the Bees of the Empire. So, it's just basically promoted the Coliseum. And, and just by sheer coincidence, he's traveling with the Guildmaster, which in the episode, he just just traveling with them because they go to that separate country. So, look up, he knows he's a friend of the of the promoter who actually is promoting. He knows that he's a friend of the promoter who promoted the the Warrior King, which they mentioned in the last episode, who is a war troll. So, thanks looking around. They do add something here, which I I didn't, I didn't see in the book, per se. When, when it gets to the guy's house every next day, do we listen to Guildmaster home via teleportation magic? So, pretty much in a way, I'll respond to that in this video. So, he goes to meet with him and he basically puts on the mask he used to wear back in season one. Basically, he zipped up his, 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 his cloak, put the iron gloves on, and put the mask on, which is quite interesting. He puts this on because a lot of reminiscing of basically the previous season, the first season of the show, this one, with this one, this movement. Then he mentions in the conversation Gaz Stronoff, who I killed last season. Interesting, no, this is actually probably the second time he's been mentioned this season. And in case you're curious, though, is he still dead in the books? As far as I read the books, as book 13, he is still dead. They have not resurrected him at all. Nope, not really. So they arrange. Uh, thanks to this conversation. He also someone's upon a sword that's got runes, which is made by the dwarves. Now the whole point of this little bit of conversation, set up the very next book up the set up the very next episodes that's gonna adapt book eleven of the series, which explores the Dwarven Kingdom. Which I'm very much looking forward to that one. Yep. Because it's interesting because they've already explored very other creatures in the series. So why not the why not the dwarves? I have heard that in the next book coming out, which I have book fourteen, which doesn't explore this. 
but Book 15 does this, where it's going to basically explore the elves, the elven kingdom, which should be quite interesting when, when, when the book comes out here. So, then they basically agree to have two conversations, like, is it true? You can, but he mentions the stuff he did toward the end of the previous season, where he summoned basically like a special spell to kill thousands of soldiers, create these, these, these creatures. And yeah, that part is true. He does mention it takes him 10 years basically to basically over that that much magic to basically create the damn thing. Which, from his perspective, it's basically just withholding a lot of information when it relates to that. And basically, like, well, basically with his plan, he agrees to basically line in front of the match. The only rule is basically no magic. You can use martial arts, you can use weapons, but you can't, you can't cast any spells. Yet these, and he minds no problem with that. So basically, he kind of switch up a class a bit. Kind of similar way he does Molmon. So, then we cut to the actual fight itself. So, you kind of say that the first half of the episode kind of takes place during the previous episode, kind of. And then the rest of the episode takes place just, just right afterwards. If I, if before the fight, you have the promoter Oki, which, by the way, he refers himself as a humble merchant in the book, both book and anime, which I'm glad the Yen Press version of the book actually kept this in. So... He says basically look his fight and he goes out. He has basically introduced himself. He just introduced his long name as Ayn, the Sorcerer King, not the King of Darkness. You impressed, that's stupid. So then he proceeds to like give his full name and the war troll basically is very happy with it. He doesn't laugh at it. And Ayn is very impressed with him. So he's just like, Okay, if I win, you become my subordinate. He's like, okay, and, well, then he has something else he agreed to, and we get a fight. It's a really good fight sequence here. At one point, he basically switched up the spear he had from the, from the cover, switch up to the swords. Now, he says he got these from Momon. That part is actually not true. He actually got these from Clementine, who, st who he got these from her when he stabbed, she stabbed them in the eyes. So, yeah, that's where he, just, that's where he got it from. Not from Momon, from Clementine. Maybe in official circumstances, Melmon, according to the official circumstances, Melmon must have taken the stuff, from these items that he saw her, and he must have given them to Ainz as a present to basically swore his loyalty to her. He probably kept, probably the official story is that Melmon kept Clementine's weapons as sort of, in a way, a, uh, um, it's basically sort of like a memento of his battle. So you could say officially, Melmon gifted these basically to Ainz as part of his loyalty to him that's my personal guess exactly what the reasons for is and puts up a pretty good battle here and then he also does touch the 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 war troll his name is gogon now despite his own magic he not really using magic he does point out it's actually negative energy because he's a, he's basically an elder lynch just by a simple touch and yeah that part is probably true because he's not casting magic, it just affected him being Elder Lynch. That's really all it is. And it, it hits him a pretty good battle. It takes him about 10 minutes in the anime, the episode. And then he supposedly kills him, wins the fight, votes the whole venture thing, resurrects him, probably to become supported. And he goes talk to the Emperor of the Busy Empire. Of course, he talks about, he says, become a, a vessel state. Yes, a vessel state. Because he knows he can't exactly win against him. And, Mo and of course, Ainz is basically shocked the fact that he would propose this. Now, Ainz probably had no idea that that Jiggeroff was going to propose this. Yeah, he had no idea about this at all. From, from, from his reaction in the anime, especially the book too, which I'm glad the book actually got this part right, where he was generally shocked about this. He had no idea. He just the paperwork up and of course and he just and then the episode ends kind of basically kind of how we it's a bit of extension here the new cuts a bits out here like one thing the anime does cut out here is mentions of Mo, of Ainz's real name Soto uh, Sato I think his name real name is yeah there's no mention of that at all in the anime which is interesting the book keeps it in the anime cuts mentions of that out and basically kind of trims down a little bit of the final bit of the episode, which is basically taken from the end of chapter three. And that's pretty much the episode in a nutshell. It's a damn good episode. 
and I can't wait for next week, which is going to wrap up book 10. Yep. Now, in case you're curious, though, because I own book 14, because I reviewed books 10, 11, basically the last four books that come out, am I going to do a review of basically book number 14? Yes. Despite the fact the am is going to die anyways. I'll basically bring up what changes basically they made from the book to the anime. Well, I can tell from the depth of from here, it's pretty faithful. But I think the only thing he added here was the whole thing with the, the sword with, with runes on it, because that was not in the book at all. They probably added it as sort of basically like, well, the best way to describe it is that basically it just sit in front of your next episode. That's really all it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I gotta say, damn good episode. Can't wait for next week. And this week, pretty much every video tonight, because I have no other plans of video tonight. It's not because it came on how late, even though it's almost 10 o'clock. It's just I have no more videos to do. No more Comic Corner, nothing. I might have one more Comic I might have a Comic Corner coming tomorrow, along with the review of the newest episode of Harem and a Labyrinth. And as for the other anime I'm starting up, alongside with I've been Killing Slime for 300 years maxed out, that won't come probably for another day or two. It might come, I don't think it comes tomorrow. It, it depends on when I finish the first book. That's when I'll talk about the episodes for that one. How much? you find out basically when the anime review comes out, okay? So I see you all tomorrow for Hammer 11 and maybe our Comic Corner. Bye.